<laughs> Welcome to the 15th Floor, a Radiohead reaction podcast where a Gen X father tries to convince his Gen Z son that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time by introducing him to Radiohead music one song at a time. You'll hear him react to that song for the first time, and I will talk about why I love that song so much and why it proves that Radiohead is the greatest band of all time. Uh, been a little bit of a break. Uh, Jacob's grandparents, uh, my in-laws, were in town uh, for a week, and so we just kind of took a break. So we're back at it. We'll do this video, maybe get another The Smile video going and a ro role reversal coming up. So, and then get back to some more viewer requests. Feels like there's lots to do. But we do have a mailbag episode coming up. We've had some good submitted questions. If you haven't already submitted a question and you're a regular viewer or listener, think of something <laughs> just so we can do one. I like the ones that have already been submitted. If you've already submitted ones and, you've already, and you want to submit some more, we appreciate you humoring us and uh, throwing those in there. It feels weird to say, there's got to be something about me that you want to know. But um, there's not. I thought uh, we'd go to uh, 1997 OK Computer. Uh, this is, of course, uh, one of their great albums, if not the greatest album of the 90s, if not the greatest album of all time. The first several times I listened to OK Computer, th these songs were moody and heavy, and uh, back in the 90s, I used to do, uh, I used to really enjoy going into my room um, and kind of setting a dark mood on purpose. Um, uh, turn on the black light with your wicked black light poster. And um, I, I, here's the problem, though. I was already done with high school, so I have just admitted I had a black light after high school. Um, that's right. I think for an album that has so many good songs, and I think good songs on first listen, you haven't exactly been... Um, super open to OK Computer. This song is the the spookiest, creepiest, crawliest song that Radiohead could come up with. One of the things that is well known about OK Computer is that Tom York tried to do something vocally for a, a, a very different vocal performance for every song. So he sounds a little bit different. Um, it's still very clearly Tom York, but you'll understand very clearly that they're going for a very unique, thick sound here. Climbing Up the Walls was suggested by Rockstar2001, Stephen Glenn, Chupa Bigfoot, Sealish Productions, and 501st Egg. And if those are, if those are repeats or people, uh, or that's all the same person, then thank you for changing your name so much and making it look like we have more viewers than we do. This is one of Radiohead's best examples of feeling, tone, tempo, overall environment of a song matching how um how they present it presentation so i hope you enjoy from 1997's okay computer climbing up the walls
that cow when he sings, and either way you turn, that's assuming if it was a normal song structure, if it was using that, it would be the beginning of the chorus. Right. And I do like how, since it's the beginning of the chorus, it's there's a little drop mm -hmm. in there, and it kind of just happens. It sounds like something that would be used in a trailer for a movie. Oh, it would it would make a good it, yeah give you a good feeling yeah. something that invites a, a feeling and an environment and an expectation. Mm -hmm. For a type of movie, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> gotten there yet, but that's it. Just seems like it would be in there. Probably an Adam Sandler comedy. I'd guess. No, no, <laughs> something more serious than that. This for sure. I love uh, Phil's drumming. I li I like that that it goes from those bongo style uh, drum into a. A full rock drum, um, and I I really love the the low harmonization that you'll hear. Like so many Radiohead songs, it takes a long time and multiple listens to pick apart what everybody's doing. If you can hear Colin, the bassist, it's a really raw, um, not raw, uh, a really gruff sound. You can hear there's a, a, a distorted acoustic guitar in this from Tom, and um, and then there's a lot of actual orchestration from. Um, from Johnny, they're actually getting most of this from various keyboards, um, an orchestration um, uh, unit, uh, like a Krumar, um, a Korg Prophecy, um, made uh, brilliantly immortal in the uh, song Lift. Um, anyway, it's amazing that they're getting a lot of this actually from uh, new electronic computer, okay? stuff that they are uh, experimenting with. feel about long intros and uh, long outros and that last 30 seconds of the song isn't really anything special in my are you talking about when he's screaming or are you talking After about just the, the screaming the, okay just the random yeah stuff. and that's hardly i mean I, I yes it's an outro to the track probably not an outro to the song yeah. um i i look at tom's uh descent into screaming madness as kind of the wrap-up of the song the image in my brain that when i was hearing the song was a man walking in the jungle because as you said i don't it's i you did not put words in my mouth i was thinking this earlier but you said with the head. crickets yeah yeah put a thoughts in my mouth. with the crickets 
sounding and i also kind of like heard a bird as a few, yeah. four, few points i yeah. kind of gave off that nature ish vibe whatever the heck that yep. cricking just, noise. Cre- just see <laughs> what, what you're calling like a jungle vibe i'm calling a just dark haunted vibe uh just a uh, just noises things that sound like cr- crickets or fluttering wings or um, I mean, stuck in a psycho's basement, which of course the, the the lyrics help out with that. There's so much like psycho killer on the loose, so much um, protect your children from, but really it's much more personal than that. It's not about an external threat. It's about an internal threat to self, I think. I think it's about a descent into madness, which is reflected in Tom's he starts off very smooth although a distorted vocal you can hear it throughout he's it's not a very clear recording of a vocal and purposefully Um, and then it just gets a little more insane as he goes and uh, and certainly goes all the way to the point that the 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 uh after the second chorus when all and then it sounds almost uh, uh, maybe a little time and place 90s rock as they start bringing in all the other um, elements of their instruments that they're using for this song. Again, uh, you hear he's using the chord prophecy in a way to kind of make it sound like an own Martino because he's not using that just yet. Um, you can catch a glimpse of that for about 20 seconds during that part. And then, of course, it goes into his climbing up the walls scream and and you can just see, I mean, it's not just a scream. It's not an angry scream. It's a, a scream like get out of my head type of scream. So somehow here they managed in this song to get every one of their sounds, every one of their vocals, again, that low harmonization, that almost vocal fry spoken harmonization. They've gotten every element of the song to sound just as creepy as the lyrics are. When OK Computer came out, my uh, bedroom was in the basement of our house. And um, I grew up in the uh, rainforests of Western Washington. If I woke up to go to the bathroom of the middle of, in the middle of the night, I knew not to turn on the lights. Because if you turned on the lights, you would see at least one, if not six, hobo spiders sitting on the wall. They just sat there on the wall. I'm sure during the day they retreated into the walls or into my clothing or whatever they were doing. But... I knew when I'd flip on the light, they would be on the walls. You know I hate spiders. I mean, I can't stand the idea of spiders. Um, But at the time, for some reason, they didn't bother me. And this song reminds me of of their ability to take over my safe space. Yeah, good times. Yep. And now I won't even go in a room with a spider. You go in a little pipeline with a spider, though. Whatever the heck that thing is. I do have to mess with the underground sprinkler system, and there's always black widows in there. Um, that is not pleasant. We were cleaning out the garage just two days ago and found a nice, healthy, fat black widow. And it always reminds you, hmm, this thing is sleeping within 20 yards of me. I don't like that. Creepy, crawly, yep. climbing up the walls. I don't know how I feel about songs that kind of like pick up at the chorus, but then they kind of stay that way throughout the rest of the song because that's what that's kind of what the song did sometimes it goes really well and sometimes it doesn't Mm -hmm. did you want it to scale back more i don't know i felt like it did a good job with how it plays out and i don't know you describing kind of how it feels i feel like that makes sense how Mm -hmm. they did that well i don't want to rob you of your thoughts what what from the jungle did you get anything else from that whole feeling or was it just those natural sounds the jungle, the beginning is just him walking, and then after the first chorus, there's danger, and the rest of the song is him in danger. Yeah. Are you bothered by how difficult it is to understand Tom York? You have yes. said many times, uh, especially early on when you weren't quite sure how Radiohead operated, that you, you, you need to hear the, 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 the clear lyrics. Yeah. Um, and this is a song where they're not, even, they're not even trying to help you out there. Nope. Yeah. They're not, they're not doing you any favors. Did it bother you or did it actually add to the experience? And I'm not saying that because that's the right answer. That is the right answer, but... I I noticed it at the beginning. Yeah. And then as it went on, I didn't really... It just felt like another... Not another Raiderhead song, but... But you got used to it. Yeah. What do you give Climbing Up the Walls? I gave it a seven and a half. Okay. You get Climbing Up the Walls, 
No Surprises, which you've heard. Um, then you get a song called Lucky, and then you uh, finish it out with The Tourist. Uh, it, it's, it's an exploration into a band that is ready to, in their next album, Kid A, in a few years, uh, is ready to change everything. Um, and you, I think you get a snippet, a sneak peek of that. They don't need to rock for you to uh, to be entertained, and they they don't they don't care whether you find that entertaining or not. Just so happens that everybody did find this entertaining, and this is a, a, a very well, highly respected album by those who know. And if you want to sound smart, if you want if you want to win friends and influence people, you'll tell them you love climbing up the walls from OK Computer. If you want to. Uh, be a lurch, uh, a societal uh, reject, then tell them this song did nothing for you. I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> this is how I pressure him yep. to understand. It's less about the music now and it's more about the, the pressure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the kids listen to this song. Um, I always have my younger kids uh, listen to the song and then draw a picture based on it. And uh, this is what we got. Uh, his picture. It says trombone... And you, if you can see the yellow in this picture, this guy seems to be singing quite joyfully, almost angelically. But the yellow he's holding is a trombone. I think he felt like there was a trombone in there somewhere. Um, a trombone has a good bass baritone uh, tone, so maybe he was hearing the, uh, the harmonization and thought there's a trombone in there somewhere. So I want to be very clear here. I did not tell my daughter the spider story. And I did not use the phrase insect or spider or even creepy crawly, which is how I've always described this song. She has down at the bottom a toy bin because it mentions the uh, the toys in your basement. And I think she's drawing a basement. And naturally, because she's my brilliant daughter, she felt creepy crawly spiders. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a good... she. Whether it's the right interpretation of this song, she has a similar interpretation that I do. This song is a hit when they uh, when they perform it live. People get real excited. It's not one that you'd think that uh, people would get real jazzed up for, but usually it's uh, uh, preceded by uh, Johnny Greenwood bringing out a radio and tuning it to a classical music station. So and and playing those various classical music tones throughout the uh, the song. So people kind of know what's happening when he brings out that radio. It's like, oh, we're doing Climbing Up the Walls. Um, I think for our next Radiohead song, we, I mean, it feels like it's been a long time since we've done In Rainbows, but we've also covered a lot of In Rainbows. So maybe In Rainbows or uh, King of Limbs or B-sides from that era. So suggest a way. If you haven't already gotten a question in for the mailbag episode and you really want to have your name mentioned in a podcast that's watched by less than a thousand people, um, uh, uh, leave a question for us. Continue to uh, like, uh, share, subscribe, uh, do all the things you should do to make a video uh, look, to, to trick YouTube into thinking that we are doing brilliant work here. And uh, leave a comment and um, I will try to respond to that comment within the first day. Continue to love one another. Keep listening to music together. You're now leaving the 15th floor.